meet the brigade. My blossoming colony of Feidoi by Carinata. From a starved, neglected founding colony to a bustling urban society, this colony has been a blast to keep. Join me on this journey into the life of this up-and-coming civilization. I'm Rushmore Ants, and welcome to the very first colony update on the Wilderness Anting YouTube channel. Feidoli is one of the most successful ant genera in the world, with over 1,200 species and subspecies living on all six continents where ants are found. My colony is of the species Feidoli bicarinata, one of the most widespread in all of North America. They're a fun-sized Feidoli, with workers being only 2 millimeters long and majors being 3 millimeters. However, as I have found out, they are still active, dynamic, and have almost too much personality for their own good. Colonies grow to about 3,000 workers, which for an ant keeper is generally the perfect size. Large enough to be exciting, but not too large to be overwhelming. Like all Feidoli species, Bicaranata are infamous among ant enthusiasts for their distinct polymorphism, i.e. their different worker casts. Feidoli colonies mostly consist of these small workers, referred to as miners. No, Diddy, not that kind of miner. Miner workers take care of most tasks in the colony, including foraging for food, caring for the young, and nest construction. However, the genus also developed a specialized cast of soldiers, referred to as majors. Your sergeant major, major, major. Oh, uh, yeah. Majors can be several times larger than minors, and have these disproportionately large heads which are packed full of muscle. These bobblehead looking ants earn them the nickname Big Headed Ants, and are the reason they are so loved in the ant keeping community. The major cast role in the colony includes ripping apart food with their large mandibles powered by their even larger heads, colony defense, and lifting heavy objects which would otherwise take several miners to carry. These large majors are also used as food storage tanks. You see, ants have two stomachs, a personal stomach, and a social stomach, which stores food for later. Since majors are large, their social stomachs are also large, allowing them to store much more food than the small miners. Ants can regurgitate the contents of their social stomach into another ant via truffalaxis, this mouth-to-mouth -mouth kissing action. Speaking of food, most Feidoli species are omnivores, enjoying a wide variety of foods from all three of the ant food groups, meat, sugar, and seeds. In order to grow, ant larvae need to eat many times their body weight in meat, particularly other insects. Lots and lots of insects. Feidoli aren't picky about which type, and will generally eat anything that moves. In captivity, crickets, mealworms, superworms, fruit flies, and cockroaches are all common choices, as they are readily available in pet stores. Once a foraging miner finds a dead, dying, or injured insect, she rushes back to the colony. Only minutes later, a trail of dozens and dozens of ants follow the pheromone trail she laid down. The majors rip apart the exoskeleton, freeing up the soft, juicy insides for consumption. Still hungry? Okay. The miners then crawl inside the insect, lap up the blood and bodily fluids, and dismantle the food's organs piece by piece. After around 48 hours, the only thing left is a hollow, empty husk. Very cold. Methodical. Next up, we have sugars! <laughs> Sugar is the powerhouse of the ant. It's pretty much the only thing adult workers need to survive. Fun fact, adult workers can also only consume liquids, so the sugar must be in liquid form. In captivity, this means plain sugar water, honey, and hummingbird nectar are all excellent options. And finally, I am seed. No? Okay. The majority of ant genera require only protein and sugar. A few, including Feidoli as well as others such as Pachinamermex, Messer, Veromesser, Novomesser, and Aphenogaster, will readily accept seeds as well. 
Seeds contain both carbohydrates and proteins, making them an excellent source of food for any ants that can process them. And it just so happens that Fedoli majors are perfect for the task. Their big heads are perfect for cracking them open and slicing through their fleshy interiors. My Fedoli by Carinata Colony loves Kentucky bluegrass seeds, as well as peanuts and pistachios. You know what other species loves pistachios? Tetramorium immigrans. Remember this, you will be hearing about it in a future video. Now onto the brigade itself. I received this queen from an unnamed vendor in mid-October of 2024, around six months ago. Upon arrival, they were skinny, underfed, and only had a few brood. This unusual lack of brood combined with the fact that they are literally EATING that pupa, their own sister, means that they were desperate. These ants also have their mating flights in July, so by October they should have had dozens or hundreds of workers. Mine only came with 12. A healthy colony has more brood than workers. These clearly did not. Their test tube was also dried out and was molding, so I moved them into a poor and more cryptic insert as seen in this video. After moving them into the new test tube, I placed it in an outworld and immediately fed them. Shortly after, they sent half of their workers to gather the feast I had set before them. Small colonies are typically shy, and usually considered their few workers as too valuable to risk half of them, meaning they were starving. Six weeks later, in early December, I had successfully nurtured the colony back to health. They produced their first major at this time, and had dozens of other larvae and pupae. This is how a Fedoli colony of 10 to 20 workers should look. You can see the workers' gasters are swollen with food, and they CERTAINLY aren't eating their own pupae! On New Year's Day 2025, the colony was slowly accepting the fact that food shortages and neglect were a thing of the past. Their worker population trickled up slowly, and their brood pile grew exponentially. Unfortunately, their major died, although that turned out to be a temporary setback. Growth continued slowly until early March, when the colony began gearing up for their population explosion. At this point, they had around 35 workers and 5 majors, as well as over 100 brood. At this point, I was used to their growth being slow and steady over the course of the months. Boy, was I about to be surprised. Just a week later, the aforementioned population explosion had begun. The colony skyrocketed from 35 workers to 100 in less than a week nearly tripling their population in just a few short days. I could hardly believe my eyes when checking on them and taking this recording. Their feeding response had settled at around one-fourth to one-third of their colony size, not one-half like before, which makes them quite entertaining to watch. This was the point where they started sending out enough workers to form visible trails. This species is excellent at making distinct food trails. Three short weeks later, in early April, the colony doubled in population again. Now, they had roughly 200 workers and 25 majors. As a general rule of thumb, roughly 10% of the colony's population is majors. Seeing as majors are so large and chonky, the colony had to spend quite a few resources to grow them. As such, they are considered valuable assets to the colony, and before now, they were cautious and hesitant to let majors go into the outworld, the outside, where they instinctively know there are predators. Well, not in captivity, but in the wild. It was at this point where they began sending majors into the outworld to actually do their job, which is to use those fat Fedoli heads to crush and rip apart food. At this time, the colony also produced in a late barba. Producing reproductives is a huge milestone in a colony's journey, and I was thrilled to witness one so early. Two weeks later, the colony outgrew the poor more cryptic insert they were living in. 
About a hundred of their workers were forced to live in the outworld underneath their test tube. I bought an unused Pormor Array Formicarium from Ants Dakota, the other inferior poster on this channel. Essentially, the array allows you to connect several culture tubes together to form one cohesive formicarium. At the time of the move, the colony had around 350 workers. Also worth noting, the Aleda closed into a male. I was hoping for a queen, but hey, I'll take a male. I also received one of Ants Dakota's beautiful outworlds, which are available right now on the Wilderness Antic Shop. Right now, the colony sits at around 600 workers, with around 200 in the outworld at all times collecting food. They have since settled into their new home, although they killed the male for resources shortly after he was born, as the lates don't do any work and just waste resources, especially for a non-mature colony. After around the 500 worker mark, the colony slowed down its growth rate, taking a brief rest as they gear up for an even larger scale population explosion. Over the past week or so, the colony's appetite dramatically increased, and the queen just laid a fresh batch of eggs, so this new population explosion will happen very soon. Stay tuned to stay up to date on the Brigade and my other colonies, which will be featured in following videos. Well, that wraps up this first colony update on the all-new Wilderness Anting YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Liking, sharing, and subscribing are optional. But if you don't, my Tetris will come after you in your sleep. Just saying. <laughs> this is Rushmore Ants with Wilderness Anting. <laughs>